It's not the same subject, it's a similar subject, nice and complimentary. Um, thank you very much for the uh, invitation to this conference. Um, my name is Ivo Rutten, I'm representing OLED Works, and I'm welcoming you to the presentation that's called Advanced OLED Lighting Technology for Automotive Applications. And the, the gist of the story really is that we managed to qualify OLED for use in automotive. Um, let's have a brief look at the agenda. I hope I can operate this thing, yes. So firstly, I'll briefly introduce OLED Works to you. Um, afterwards, I'll completely focus on automotive lighting, although the company is active in other things as well. We'll talk a little bit about key differentiators in comparison to other technologies, where we are today in terms of development and performance of the modules, and I'll also show you what you can expect in the near future and I'll let you know what we have on our roadmap as well, and then I'll end with a summary. So OLED Works is present in three locations. I'm beginning on the left-hand side. That's Rochester, USA. Those are the headquarters. Uh, you probably know that Kodak was a company uh, headquartered in, in Rochester as well. And initially, Co Eastman Kodak was the pioneer in OLED invention and, um, and development. In 2010, however, Kodak ended its uh, involvement in OLED, uh, laid off the people, sold the IP portfolio, and OLED Works was then established by a few of those laid off people. And, uh, they offered industry OLED consulting and also started the facility to further develop uh, OLED for lighting, not for displays, but for lighting. Kodak was focused on displays. And they started the manufacturing. In 2015, the middle location in Aachen, Germany was added. Um, the history of this location is, is Philips, Philips Lighting. Philips Lighting developed OLED technology since the early 2000s, and it started in their research labs right here at the, at the high-tech campus. Around 2005, a manufacturing location was established in Aachen, Germany, and the focus there was OLED for general lighting. Obviously, Philips Lighting was, is a lighting company, and not, also not on displays. Around 2014, Philips, however, also decided to stopped their activities, and this led to the acquisition in 2015 of the Philips OLED business by OLED Works. OLED Works bought a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility, which is really something, something different, something special, and completely proprietary, and it took over many of the Philips experts. And then later we added the Shanghai office, that's really a sales office to serve our local customers there. So that's the geographical spread over the markets. In terms of uh, application markets, OLED Works is active in general and special lighting. Uh, specialty lighting, we, uh, we have R&D and start commercialization uh, soon of micro displays. And the topic of the talk today is automotive lighting. This, uh, this entails tail lights, turn signals, interior lighting, logos, and center-mounted stop lamps. So where the previous speaker is focusing on the inside of the car, I'm talking about more of the outside of it and the, and the backside, to be completely frank. So what's the structure of an OLED? I hope you can see that it starts up top with a shiny black layer, that's the glass layer. Um, it's uh, transparent and it has a conductive uh, ITO display on it. Um, some metal layers to boost the connectivity and increase homogeneity of the segments. And then the OLED itself, which is the first layer is the red layer in the, in the picture. Um, for every stack, we have six to seven organic layers with a thickness in the nanometer range. And these layers are applied under high vacuum in a very specialized machine. Depending on the complexity of the device, there are uh, starting from about 20 layers for, for a typical device, and many more when, uh, when there are more stacks. And we use more stacks when we need more light more lifetime. The last layer, which is the uh, ochre one in the picture, uh, not the very last one, but the one on top of the, the metal looking one, that's the encapsulation and that's a crucial bit of layering in the OLED structure uh, when you talk about automotive because it protects the OLEDs against humidity and other uh, external uh, influences. OLED layers are very sensitive to water so you have to protect them very well. The very last layer is the alum aluminum layer which we put there for uh, thermal uh, uniformity and for mechanical protection. Now the whole package add up, adds up to about 0.9 uh, millimeters, so it's very thin, and most of it is the thickness of the glass. And the light is generated